progress. Hello, please keep your microphones closed. Welcome to this webinar. My name is Indira Suero. We're about to start in just a minute. So here I see a lot of people coming in from different places, some names that we already know. <laughs> Let's wait for a little bit more, more people. Sara, hello. Hector, please keep your microphone closed and all of the other persons that are coming to this webinar, we will truly appreciate that. Okay. So hello and welcome to this informative webinar about the John S. Knight Journalism Fellowships at Stanford University with you, Indira Suero, Sembra Media Ambassador in the Dominican Republic, together with my colleague, Ana Paula Balaco, which is uh, to my left in the screen. She's the ambassador of Sembra Media in Argentina. We will accompany you in this exciting conversation with fellows Desiree Yepes from Ecuador and Enrique Naveda from Guatemala. Okay, I got a message from Zoom. Enrique Naveda from Guatemala, as well as Don Garcia. She's the director of the JSK Fellowships. So thank you, all of the three of you, for being here. One of the main goals of the John S. Knight Journalism Fellowships is to support diverse journalists from around the world who are creating solutions to journalism's most urgent problems. With that in mind, what better way to, for this fellowship to have applicants from Latin America, a diverse and unique region in each of its countries and in the way that we do journalism. Tenemos muy buen periodismo en América Latina. At Sembra Media, we help independent media leaders from Hispano America build stronger organizations and develop sustainable business models. So we know, we truly know that there is a lot of talent in our region. In general, only a few applications are coming from Latin America. With this alliance with the John S. Knight Journalism Fellowships, we want to encourage all of the journalists in Latin America, Hispano America, to participate and empower ourselves as a region. That is why our goal today is to learn more about the fellowship, thanks to the first person voice of Don Garcia, and those who have already participated as fellows. This space is for you to take the opportunity to ask questions about the preparation process, to apply, and also to get an idea of the power of this experience for Latin American journalists. So first, what we're going to do today is that we will start with some questions to get to know you better. And then Don Garcia will explain more about the fellowships. Finally, Desiree and Enrique will tell us about their experience as fellows. And then we will allow to some time for your questions. So thank you very much. And I leave you with my colleague, Ana Paula. Hello, hello everyone. And as the CIA mentioned, and Indira mentioned, sorry, uh, we are really excited to host this space. And first of all, just to start with, uh, I would like to ask some questions so we can get to know you better. And to do that, we're going to start with a poll that we, all these questions will just appear on your screen. So when you uh, answer, then we'll get some notion about the kind of audience we are talking with today. So let me start. And please, someone just tell me if you can see the questions already. No. 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 Check. Not yet, Ana Paula. Not yet. I've already no. on start, but just let me let me see now. Oh, okay. I'm I'm not being able to start it. Perhaps some uh, someone from the organizing team can just start it. I'm checking. Uh, I'm checking. Yes. Thank you. Basically, Ana Paula in a. While we get the answer, the questions, basically what we're going to do in this part is to ask you more about where do you come from, if you have, um, if you're a media leader, or what do you do in your daily basis as a journalist. So that is for us to get to know you better. 
both Sembra Media and JSK, we want to get to know you better so we can know a little bit more about the profile of people that are coming to the JSK fellowships and that are applying hopefully for this year program. Yes, exactly. So just let me know, please, Annie, if we can work on that. I'm checking everything, but maybe you can start talking and we can yeah. let this fall for later. Okay. Okay, yeah. Then no 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 worries because basically yes, what we wanted to know is where where you are connecting from, uh, specifically whether if you identify most like uh, as academic or media leaders, media founders, or just journalists that want to to engage in this kind of, of opportunities. Then uh, if you know anything about JSK, the JSK Fellowship and about the University of Stanford, the Stanford University. And of course, uh, if you have already applied or not. If anyone wants to share those answers, um, meanwhile in the chat, it's okay, but don't feel pressed. Uh, so um, just, to make sure that we at least know who is in the room. Especially because our fellow, the fellows that are joining us today, Enrique and Desi, they are, they were also, I mean, they were also part of this community. They were like you. So we can, we can always have a very um, great conversation. Taking that. Ana Paula, on. now we Sorry, can see maybe, the maybe now. Yeah. Yeah, it's already okay. there. Please let us right. know um, the rest of you if you can see it. The first yes. question is, which role do you identify with the most? So we hope for your questions. We wait for your questions. The second question, have you applied to the JSK Fellowship in previous years? Uh, some people, yes, surprisingly. A uh, third question, how much do you know about the fellowship? Um, some people say, well, the majority of people say a little. <laughs> and then are you familiar with Stanford University? Have you heard or researched about it? Most of us, most of our audience says yes. Perfect. Then, I'm sorry, I'm not being able to, to say it, but well, this is technology sometimes just it just fails and but well uh, if we're okay with that uh we're already 76 people joining so that's great that's a great number and we are gonna just go with don garcia as indira mentioned she's the director of the gen is night journalism fellowships and she will be able to introduce us to this fantastic opportunity with the best details and the best information. So, Don, thank you. Thank you, Anna, Paula, and the whole group. Thank you so much. It is wonderful to see, uh, yeah, more than 75 people here today. Um, so I'm happy to um, tell you more about the fellowship. Um, and then we have two of our amazing alumni who are going to be here to answer your questions and talk about what it's like to be a fellow. Um, I am now going to try to do a little technology. I, you know, technology works until it doesn't. Hopefully this works, which is a little slide deck. I'm going to share my screen. Okay. Can you see JSK Journalism and Fellowships at Stanford? Okay, excellent. Okay, well, um, welcome. We're really glad you're here. I'm Don Garcia, the director of the Journalism Fellowships at Stanford, and today is a chance for you to learn about our program and ask questions, and I'll um, say a few things about what we're looking for and what the fellowship offers, and then we'll have a chance to have the, uh, Desiree and Enrique talk about their experience. So let's begin. So what is the JSK Fellowship? The John S. Knight Journalism Fellowships, or JSK for short, is a nine-month program of professional and personal development at Stanford University. This picture is taken not very far from where I'm sitting right now in our the JSK offices. It's a it's a beautiful campus, 
And um, it really is one of the one of the parts of the fellowship that is wonderful is exploring this beautiful campus. So we just wanted to show you a picture there. So from September till June, um, JSK fellows step away from their professional work and they explore and test ideas for addressing journalism's most urgent problems. And they get to experience a vast array of opportunities that are allowed to you as a member of the, J of the Stanford campus. And um, it's a beautiful restorative place, as I mentioned. So JSK fellows join in a cohort, a group of their peers and they get individual coaching. That's one of the hallmarks of our program is individual coaching and mentoring and guidance to spark your personal and professional transformation. And in addition, fellows are invited to participate in special workshops and events and have time to explore this campus. Okay, what are we looking for? So we are seeking a diverse range of people as um, was mentioned earlier, emerging leaders, experienced journalism leaders, people who want to make a difference and be change agents and help journalism have a strong future. So we are um, in our program, I'm gonna show you here. This is this year's class. Um, it is a range of folks every year that come from around the world. So we have a mix of US and international all in one class. And we are helping to focus these journalism leaders to succeed as, as really effective change agents. And so we're looking for diversity in all kinds of ways, which makes for richer conversations, which makes for a better cohort experience. Um, and really, in, you know, we are in uncertain times in journalism. And so we want to help you build a network that lasts. So we have journalists from around the world in each class and we build those classes. And so we have more than 1000 people around the world who've been fellows from more than 80 countries uh, in our program. So fellows spend a lot of time together. It's not a uh, academic Ivy League uh, up in a up in a tower by yourself sort of experience. If you're looking for an academic experience, this is not what we are. Um, if you're trying to write a book or get a graduate degree, it's more a much more active experience. And so just to want to tell you that. These are um, some, just a few of our Latin American fellows in recent years. We have a spot every year designated for a Latin American fellow. There are very few designated spots in our fellowship class, but we have funding each year for a Knight Latin American Fellow. So we are looking for a robust pool of wonderful people like you to apply. And so these are fellows from Mexico, Argentina, um, Brazil, Chile. So all kinds of places, Peru. So these are some of our, our fellows. And just to show you that this is something that really um, we're looking to have um, Latin American journalists apply. So Think about that. Okay, so who can apply? Um, if you're at this webinar, I would urge you to apply. Um, we are looking for journalists who are um, with digital or legacy news organizations, independent journalists, journalism entrepreneurs, and journalism innovators. And um, you need to have at least five years professional experience in journalism to apply. This is not a graduate degree program. So you wanna have some experience to be able to use for your fellowship. Um, we are interested in people who are eager to grow as leaders, as people, and that they believe that they their best work is still ahead of them. And we, and we want people who embrace diversity and are excited about the prospect, prospect of being coached. So as I mentioned, coaching is important part of our fellowship. So you come with an open mind, willing to be coached, and that you want to be in a cohort of other people, of other journalists from around the world. Okay, so uh, what are the benefits of being a fellow? So why would you want to do this? So we, <clears throat> we believe that the work the fellows do is vital and urgent and demanding. And so we, you know, journalism is, is really tough. So we want to provide support for you in this experience. Each of you uh, is assigned a JSK director, myself, Pam Abels, um, Berto, to be um, one of your advisors and to coach you through the program. And um, we tailor then workshops for you that would to help your leadership, to help your thinking and offer access to the vast JSK alumni network. 
And there are also financial benefits. Um, you, our, our fellowship offers $95,000 and that is like uh, your salary and then supplements to help with housing because it is expensive here. So extra money for housing, extra money if you have kids that you bring with you for uh, through high school, Stanford tuition and health insurance. So we pay for all of those things for you. Okay, last couple things. Um, the deadline for international applications is December 6th. Our applications are open now. Some of you, it sounds like maybe have already started, which is great. Um, so it's December 6th at 1 p.m. And the fellowship would begin in September. Okay, so uh, if you are here, I would really encourage you to open application. Um, that's a QR code. You could take a quick picture there with your phone and get to our Become a Fellow page, which has all kinds of information, it has the application, but I really urge you to look through all the background information and then open an application and um, begin. And here we are, we have Desiree. Yepes and Enrique Naveda, who were fellows in our program and love to hear from them. Yeah, I'm gonna stop sharing now, thank you. Hello, Desire, Enrique. Hello. Hi, good morning. Shall we start? Yeah, okay. First of all, thank you very much for this opportunity of sharing, uh, again, my experience as a JSK fellow. It's <clears throat> awesome to be here with Don, with Pam, with Enrique. And I should say that, <clears throat> sorry, I'm just recovering from COVID. Uh, the JSK fellowship is an absolutely transforming and powerful experience. When I applied in the end of 2019, I was in a professional moment of my life where I was feeling such comfort that I was actually feeling discomfort about it. I was uh, like feeling that I did reach uh, my professional ambitions. Uh, I was leading at that time, the content management of an NGO that takes care about uh, freedom of the press, and also a safety of journalists. So I was uh, feeling like it was the moment of forcing something else. Also, uh, I should say that in a general context, I am based in Ecuador. So at that time, we were facing for the very first time, I should say, um, conversations and debates and reflections about the urgency of taking serious safety of journalists. The year before I applied, three colleagues were kidnapped and murdered. And sadly, this was an excuse to start uh, asking ourselves how could we uh, make or have or ask for better conditions to do journalism. So within that context, I thought that applying to this opportunity was uh, the best chance to uh, start working in an individual way, but also with this network that the JSK Fellowship offers you in better uh, conditions to do journalism in Ecuador. So I applied, my project was uh, conceived in that way. But then in January, 2020, I received the answer that I was accepted in the fellowship. I was, uh, was January or March? March, I think, don't remember. Yeah, probably. And just like two weeks after they told us that we are going to be part of the fellowship, the pandemic arrived. So we were asked to wait for two years until Enrique and I, we were able to get into Stanford, into California. So when I arrived to, to Stanford, this was also a huge opportunity to ask myself if I was the same person I was once when I applied. And the answer was partially yes, but there was another part of myself that was not the same anymore. So 
one um, gift I should say about the fellowship is this is that it's also an opportunity to reframe ourselves, our concerns, and the way we are dealing with our profession, but also with our objectives as human beings. I should say JSK uh, Fellowship is not only about journalism, it's also, or I should say it's more about people, as you as people. Always when people ask me about <clears throat> what they should consider when applying. I try to emphasize that uh, when they look at you, they are looking yourself, not only as the amazing journalist you are, but how you can make a change uh, within the context or among the context that you are uh, working or living in. So my personal experience during the fellowship during the fellowship was that. During the first two weeks, I reframed the project that I initially applied with, was different at the end, but I should say was absolutely according to myself. It has to do with uh, women, with girls, with hostile context. So you are not attached to your initial idea you have the opportunity to keep reflecting on during the whole year and using all the resources that stand for has for you to do so. So it was amazing. Also, a lot of people asked me if in the beginning was not also difficult to deal with English while doing the fellowship. I should say for sure is a challenge because you are like 24 <clears throat> seven uh, in touch with English, but in my very personal experience, I had had the blessing of having a very diverse cohort and a lot of my peers were Spanish speakers too. So it was uh, amaz amazing in that sense too. And at the end of the day, I should say that the best thing that I kept with me <clears throat> beside uh, the amazing classes that Stanford offers, the amazing events that you have. Uh, what I really kept with me are my peers, are my fellow fellows, are this crew of these other 12 people that were building this um, way or this path together. Uh, California is such an amazing state. I always repeat that California is a state of mind. And in my case now is a state of heart. <laughs> the fellowship also gave me the experience of meeting somebody else, I fell in love. So nowadays I'm moving between California and Ecuador. So yeah, I should say that take the chance, apply to the fellowship. And when you apply, try to be honest to what you are not only as a journalist, but as a human being. Is that. Thank you. Thank you, Desire. Thanks for those words. Something that she mentioned was, I was feeling such comfort that I was feeling discomfort. And that's one of the main reasons why she applied to this fellowship. Now let's hear from Enrique Naveda. He's in, Equ in Guatemala, in Guatemala. <laughs> Well, hi, everyone. I'm glad to see many friends in the group. Um, I, f I feel it's ridiculous that I come after this idea because I have nothing else to say. <laughs> she said it in a wonderful way. and um, Yeah, I basically wanted to make the same points. First things first, um, if you noticed uh, our pictures in uh, our pictures in Stanford, we look so much better there <laughs> and 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 that that's not a coincidence we were happy we were relaxed uh we were surrounded by people that we uh liked and loved and got to see every single day of the i was gonna say a year but it's it's nine months actually nine ten months and that helps a lot and that changes your life in a, in ways that are totally unexpected uh, for every for for every one of us and that I'm missing a lot uh, when 
now I'm back in Guatemala and when I talk to people and they say, how are you feeling and, and what are you missing the most? And one of the things that I'm missing the most is that uh, human contact with people that I like and people that are intellectually stimulating uh, every single day uh, for hours and hours and hours. Uh, so where was I when I applied for, for the fellowship uh, back in 2019, so a long time ago? Um, I was between a rock and a hard place. <laughs> I was the I had been the the editor in chief of Plaza Pública in Guatemala for I think six years, so that that far. Uh, but before that, I was the deputy editor in chief, so I had been the the lead of the of the news outlet for almost uh, for for eight years. Um, we were uh, in the middle of. Uh, democratic backsliding that was horrible. Um, Guatemala is one of the 10 most rapidly autocratizing countries in the world in the last three years. And we were uh, kind of started that, starting that trend uh, back then. Um, I was in the middle of a huge burnout as the leader of the newsroom. And I think that's... Mm, Somehow, most of us who come from autocratizing or autocratic countries uh, to the fellowship have experienced, and also some of the of our fellows uh, from from the U.S. Um, and I felt stuck. Uh, I knew I had a lot of plans for for Plaza Pública, uh, which sounded kind of contradictory to the moment I, I was leaving. But and to the moment that the country was leaving, but we wanted to expand. We wanted to become transnational. I had a plan to uh, grow Plaza Pública uh, into other Central American countries. Uh, I was Plaza Pública was founded by a Jesuit university, and in that moment, I was fighting the president of the university because he had an alliance with the with the business elite, uh, and the business elite was the elite that Plaza Publica was known for um, uh, investigating, investigating as no other news outlet in Guatemala had investigated them. So the, 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 the struggle, the fight against the president was, was cruel <laughs> and, was, and was hard. Um, and um, when I applied, I said that my project was... Um, was manifold. Uh, I wanted to learn how to approach the public conversation um, regarding controversial issues in a more constructive way, in a way that could foster understanding and could more move the conversation forward. And I had the feeling that we as investigative journalists hadn't been doing that or didn't have the tools to do that. But at the same time, I wanted to learn about leadership because we were planning this expansion towards towards uh, Central America. And I didn't know how to deal with a bigger newsroom that, uh, remember, this was 2019, that had to work um, not in person uh, with people that you wouldn't see um, at least once a month or twice a month or once a week. Um, so, yeah, my, my and I, I said, I have these many concerns and I have these many interests and they are so broad and disconnected. And I, want, I, I, I need to see if there's some way to put all of them to work together and make something bigger, something better, something more efficient. But my interests were very theoretical. Mm. Nothing related to technology, which is why uh, what uh, Stanford is known for, for instance, or it was very well known for. This program was very well known for uh, years ago. So this was this was very theoretical. Very, uh, it has a lot of it had a lot of methodology into it, and uh, a lot of uh, leadership uh, techniques. Um, that was twenty nineteen. And then, as Desida said, uh, we got it. Um, and one or two days later, they said, no, put it on hold. You'll come next year. Next year, 
they said, don't put it on hold. You're not going to get it. Uh, this is not working uh, this year either. Uh, you'll have to apply again. <laughs> and that was devastating. Uh, the form of previous anxiety be became devastation. But we applied again. <laughs> and the process was, uh, was shortened and made easier. As a matter of fact, I, I think they... I never asked Don or Pam, but I think they just wanted to know that we were still journalists, and we were. Uh, so we got the the fellowship, and when we arrived there, uh, we realized that even though we all had, I think, professional plans and academic interests, the project was more about a personal development. Of course, you can uh, have a you can gain a huge knowledge on your academic or professional interests, and and. Stanford will be what you make of it. Uh, there are many programs that are hugely interesting, and you may find the same topics on the business school, on the humanities department, on on the sociology department, with a different focus. That's uh, that's uh, an amazing an amazing thing. But uh, what I realize when I got there is that they put a lot of, of emphasis on the personal development. And I think that was the most important part for all of us, even for those of us who, like myself, were very focused focused on academics. And on, yeah, <laughs> I see Don is laughing. Uh, even, in, even for those of us who approached the university and the program in that way, that was probably the most um, surprising and, um, uh, and, 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 and important part of it. Not only because uh, they give you a lot of tools to heal from yeah, burnout or from trauma or from whatever you need to heal, but because they create very meaningful connections between themselves and ourselves and between the, the fellows, um, they pick you in a very in purposeful way. Uh, so if you get to, the, to, to be elected, it won't be, and I think that Desiree mentioned it, this in another way, it won't be just because of your journalistic merits, your professional merits. It will be also because what you have to offer uh, to the other people in the fellowship. It will be also because of your personal uh, abilities and skills. And if they think they will be, everybody will be able to get on well with you. Uh, that's a very specific and important uh, point you have to consider. Uh, there's a motto. Uh, I don't think if I should, I, I don't know if I should mention this, but I will, Don. Go ahead, and I'm going to bring my little sign. Just a minute. <laughs> There's a motto uh, at the program, and it's no brilliant jerks. And it means we care more about that you're not a jerk, that if you're brilliant. Of course, everybody's brilliant there but myself, but uh, but nobody's the jerk. Uh, and that's, that's very important, and, and that makes for a lot of the atmosphere uh, at the program. Uh, I will leave it there. I think it's more interesting to listen That's to their perfect. questions. That's perfect, Enrique. Yes, we have a lot of questions. And first of all, thank you. Thank you, Desire. Thank you, Enrique. This has been like super interesting and insightful. And just to start with, first, please, uh, if there are any questions in the audience, just leave it in the chat box. So our team will be able to collect them and we'll, we'll be assigning them with Indira um, either to Desi, Enrique or Don accordingly. So first of all, I would like to start with, um, with the CIDE. Just a first question about the application process because there is a form. There are some questions that lead to a lot of um, introspection and that kind of processes. So I would like to understand what worked best for you in that process. We have a couple of weeks ahead of the deadline. So what should the people in the audience focus on when approaching the questions? 
Uh, okay, I should say that <clears throat> one of the tips that I can share is to be open to share your application. I mean, to have like this uh, trustful crew of people that you might share uh, what you are thinking about, how you are approaching the issue, and that way you will find, I'm sure you will find a lot of very interesting insights or things that you might be not looking at. In my personal case, uh, my application got super powerful uh, that way, like not doing it only by myself or by my own, but uh, sharing with people that know me, like myself, that knows my work, and also that are aware about the context where I'm trying to, to work. That's the first uh, tip. And also, I already said it, but I will share it again. Uh, when you talk about yourself, try to share like that very human part of you. What make yourself yourself? You know, what make you uh, uh, like this, I don't know how to say it, but yeah, like this particular uh, journalist or woman, man, whatever, within this context. And also it's very important to consider why are you planning to go to California? Why are you planning to come to Stanford? You know, like it's not, only because the Stanford is the Stanford, but yeah, how this super institution may impact yourself and impacting yourself, how it may also impact your context and for sure your country and your colleagues. And yeah, I think that's very important to think about how this whole experience, could you then share it with other peers? Enrique, is there something that you want to add to Desire's answer? Yeah, I think so. I don't know if uh, Dave reframed the way that they asked the question for prospective um, fellows, but when when we applied, it was how do you plan to change the the the, the world or journalism in the world or something like that? And it, it feels big, but don't feel intimidated by that. Uh, they don't imply that you need to change the world. They need to, they, they want to imply that you want, you need to change your world uh, or your surroundings. Or if you're lucky enough, uh, yeah, you may invent something that will be overly influential in, in journalism and you might change the world in the way that many Silicon Valley companies have. But don't feel intimidated by that. Um, I, I didn't intend to change the world, and I think Desiree, uh, neither did Desiree. Um, this, that, that doesn't disqualify you. Um, second, uh, don't be too Latin American in the sense that um, American, and particularly Stanford, mm, mindset is different than ours humility humility is a value in in stanford of course but um don't be overly uh humble don't show and tell your merits show and tell who you are show and tell what you have to offer don't expect them to ascertain it to say he's humble so he must have something to offer that doesn't work. Um, and I know that we tend to do that because I felt bad when I was writing my application because I shouldn't be saying this about myself. And it's helpful to ask other people about your your own merits in order to, to, to do that. Then be yourself, both in the application and in the, uh, and in the interview. It shows if you're not being yourself. For instance, uh, when I applied, I yeah I I I I told this is my project and my project is uh, focused on how to improve or how to enhance the public conversation regarding controversial issues in autocratizing countries, and that was very theoretical. And uh, two days before the the deadline, I told the 
the people who were going to recommend me who were former Stanford fellows. I think this is too theoretical and vague for Stanford. I know Stanford is about technology and how to use technology to, to improve journalism and so on and so forth. And so I've prepared this other uh, project this, uh, and it's about how to use technology to, to map uh, public tenders and flag them. And, and, and yeah, it was more about uh, AI. And even though it was interesting, and I had been thinking about that project for a couple of years uh, back then, um, Ronnie Lopez, uh, one of the former fellows, said, this is not be believable. This is not you. You have to go for the theoretical one. This is who you are. This is very interesting. This is crucial for Central America and Latin America and the whole world right now. And if you are able to understand anything about that and tell other people or teach other people that would be amazing yes I, I, I wasn't I wasn't comfortable with that but I took the chance and it took me here and then when when we got the interview uh, I realized that I had made a few mistakes and I had exaggerated a bit a few things and they pointed that that, that, out. <laughs> that out and then I let I, 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 I laughed and say, yeah, I might have exaggerated a bit. And that sparked a totally different conversation with laughter. Yes. And yeah. and It's a learning process from what yeah. you and Desire say. Um, mm -hmm. Don, you have your hand raised. Yes, thank you. I, I, I want to echo and uh, expand a little bit about the application and some tips. So uh, Desire Enrique, very good uh uh, tips about having other people read your application who know you well. So they can, sometimes we don't, uh, you know, in, in English, uh, sing our own praises or toot our own horn. We, we don't uh, talk about our, ourselves because it's uncomfortable, but you need to tell us because we don't know you. So we want to know what you've done and to talk about that. Uh, and to have other people that know you well read it so they can say, well, wait, you forgot to mention that you, uh, you know, you had this project you started or you were president of this organization to help journalists around you know what have you done that would help what experience is uh highlighting for you and uh, the other thing is to give yourself a, so if you're here you should start applying now <laughs> give yourself time uh it is not a hard application but it is a thoughtful one we really put some effort into it so having chance to think through the questions so you don't have to answer them in two sentences and you know, it's not a it's not a form that you check a bunch of boxes. Um, so give yourself time, uh, and be your authentic self. Be you. Uh, we want to know who you are. We want to know why you want this. We want to know why you want to come to Stanford, and we want to know why we should pick you. Why why would you be a great fellow? And uh, there's very many ways to be a great fellow. So we want to know what you want to do. And that you have a sense about what is there at Stanford that you might tap into. Maybe you don't have to know the whole university, but is there you know, a little bit of research so you say, oh, wow, I am very interested in women and girls uh, as Desiree was. There is a gender research center here that's doing a lot of work. So if you just kind of get a sense about that, you're going to learn as Desiree knows, I was her advisor. Uh, there's a, so many things that you might not know till you get here, hard to do. <laughs> um, so, and just on, on, and then have somebody read your application when you're all done so that you don't have any distracting typos <laughs> so that we can read it. So, thank you. You're welcome, Don. Thanks for those tips. I'm sure that all of us are taking notes here. I also have a question for Desire and Enrique. What was it like to return to your countries? Because I imagine, I know that Enrique is in, uh, Desire is laughing like, oh. <laughs> I know that Enrique is in Guatemala and Desire, you two are in Ecuador, right? So what was it like to return? I imagine that being from Latin America, we might worried about, okay, I'm leaving my work to go to Stanford for a fellowship, but what what happens when I come back? So what were what was your experience? I should say <laughs> I'm still navigating that feeling. Okay. <clears throat> the very first thing in 
and serious in a serious way is um in my very personal experience when I leave Ecuador in 2022, this was a very different country uh, from the one that's now, no? So nowadays we are one of the most violent countries all around the world, which means that the conditions we're going through are absolutely different from the ones that I left. So uh, when I came back, actually just one month ago, <laughs> uh, everything to me seems kind of uh, new. I'm like learning again how to deal uh, within this new context. Also, uh, I went back to the place that I was working on in Radio Ambulante Studios in a new position which has been like a very interesting uh, challenge nowadays. And also through the uh, fellowship, I was able to get in touch with new projects that has uh, diversified the way that I approach journalism. So nowadays I'm working on podcasts, I'm working on documentaries, and I'm working also in uh, writing or reading uh, journalism. And to be honest, as I said in the beginning, I'm moving in between. I'm uh, like in Ecuador now, but probably in the beginning of the next year, I'll be spending a season in California. Then I'll come back again. So this uh, new way that I am uh, building uh, the, the life that I want to have has also to do with the possibility that this year at Stanford gave to me, like the opportunity to stop and be able to reframe, to redesign how I want to keep moving forward. So yeah, it's not easy, I should say, to come back, but of course you can do so. Enrique, briefly, could you tell us before we passed with the yeah. audience questions, how yeah. was your experience? Well, I'm having withdrawal symptoms. <laughs> it's like a, a, a pleasant drug has been taken away from me and now it, I've been dealt a, an unpleasant one, <laughs> a destructive one. Um, but um, for me, also Guatemala has changed a lot uh, in, in, uh, in this year. Uh, one month before leaving Stanford, I had to give a lecture on Guatemala and, and our elections. And I said, uh, democracy is going to be the opportunity, the window of democracy is going to be closed for 10 to 12 years. And I'm desperate about that. And I was thinking of leaving no, or, or not returning. And it turned out that it didn't. Uh, something happened in the election, a miracle. Nobody understands why. Um, and the 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 what we call the pact of the corrupt here, which is the government, uh, the legislative branch, uh, the judiciary, and they lost the elections even though they tried to commit fraud. Now they are taken to uh, to give a coup d'etat against the, the winning, um, uh, the, the, the present elect. Uh, but now we have some kind of hope, not because of who won, but what it means to uh, this process of autocratization. Three days before uh, the fellowship was announced, uh, that I got the fellowship was announced, I had quit my job. I was, I, as I said, burnout, and I couldn't take it anymore. So I moved to Oxfam, an NGO, and uh, I started leading a project, a program on a civic space and um, inequality. Uh, I went back to my to my mm -hmm. former job uh, and I'm working on different projects on developing on developing uh, projects on journalism, on constructive journalism, on a new uh, media outlet. I don't know if it will come out, but I'm working on that. Um, and I'm happy that I'm here, at least for the moment. Let's see what how it goes. Uh, when they have, uh, when the president elect has to take um, his uh, his new position, has to take Thank office. You. Thank you. 
So focusing on some questions from the audience, I have first some questions that I think that Don could help us better because they are very related to the application process. First of all, what does, I mean, the five years of you know, professional experience mean in terms of what kind of experience you're looking to find? And then a little bit about the timeline uh, of the application and selection process. Like what are the times uh, that of the people should be expecting? That Great, good, thank you. So uh, five years experience is um, professional experience in journalism. So it could be a variety of things that you do. What it does not include is internships. Sometimes people think, okay, I've got two years of internships and two years of professional work because um, we think it, so it, you need to have uh, five years of professional journalism experience, whatever that looks like, but not internships. The, um, the timeline, uh, the deadline for the application is December 6th. Um, then we will take all those applications in from around the world and then be reading. And we have a very layered process. So we have alumni helping us, we have other folks, and then we will narrow the pool down to a smaller group of people who we will be interviewing. So not everybody gets an interview. And if you don't get an interview, um, we're sorry, please try again. <laughs> uh, I will say, um, you mentioned earlier that some people had applied before. It is uh, very, very common in our class. Every class has someone who applied before. So they succeeded on their second try or sometimes their third try. Um, they thought about, they didn't just give their same application, their, their life, just as Desiree and Enrique said, you know, their, their countries have changed, their lives have changed. So update your application if you reapply. And we are very happy to take a second year or third year application. Um, the timeline again, so we'll be reading applications. We will be doing interviews in probably February-ish. We need to look at our, and then the, um, usually March, about March is when we announce or pick the international and then the US is a separate parallel process. Perfect. And just about the professional experience that has to be in journalism strictly because they are also asking whether perhaps communications or media relations and that kind of PR work perhaps they can yeah, also come I towards have, that. Uh, unfortunately, no, we don't accept uh, experience for people who are working in PR or communications it's got to be journalism. Okay. <laughs> okay. Yes, Don. I saw a question that Pam Maples answered in the chat, but if somebody didn't see it, I just want to, uh, there is uh, one of the beautiful things about a fellowship is that you are on an, uh, uh, you're on the Stanford calendar. And so there are um, uh, two big breaks where you can do whatever you want. So uh, you come here in September and then there is a, about a month, which I never had a month off in my life until I was a fellow years ago. Uh, in December, most of the month of December is off and then two weeks in spring, in March for spring break. So uh, also now uh, Thanksgiving week, which is coming up next week is also uh, off. So you have seven weeks off to do what you want. So that is, and otherwise we want you here and very engaged. Thank you, Don. There are many questions from the audience. One of them is, are finalists interviewed after the selection process? Is there some moment in which you, uh, the committee, interview the finalists? Yes, yes. So if you, um, we, we let people know all along the process where you stand. So we try to, we try to communicate with you you know, we've gotten, we've received your application, you're moving through the process. Um, and then we let you know if you're going to be interviewed. And um, those are a very small number of people that we interview. And then the interview is um, with myself, Pam Maples, who is, who's here watching, um, maybe just a few other people. And um, I would say Desiree and uh, Enrique, what did you feel about the interview process? How was that for you? I was super nervous at the beginning, but then when I saw you, Pam, and at that moment was Michael Bolden, was more like a very uh, 
relaxed conversation. Mm -hmm. I remember at that time, Michael was the most serious of you three. <laughs> <laughs> but at the end, the four of us, we ended uh, the talk uh, laughing and was like, yeah, was cool because you are not talking only about your project or journalism. At that moment, in my case, I remember we talked also about why I wanted to go to California, what kind of hobbies do I like? Uh, yeah, was more like a personal uh, exchange. Yeah, we, yeah. What do you think, uh, Enrique? Yeah, exactly the same. I had been interviewed for another fellowship years before, and what I felt when talking to you is like it wasn't detached at all. You made it comfortable you made it relaxed uh we laughed a lot um uh, you did some very in unexpected questions uh at least unexpected for me but that contributed to relax down the the conversation i could lay back and just talk to you as if you were not my friends but yeah someone uh who i've known for a while our interviews, we want to get to know you. We get want to get to know why you want this fellowship, why you want to come to Stanford. So it's not a it's not a uh, not a, a quiz to uh, to put you off, but to get to know you better because we want to know who you are and what your what your goals are for yourself and and journalism, so that we can see whether you would be a good fellow. It was something like this, as a matter of fact, this kind of conversation, yeah. Good. Amazing. Well, we are very lucky because Pam is also answering some questions in the chat. So please refer to the chat to, to see if any of your questions have also been answered because we are running out of time. But uh, I just want to make a brief question before we leave that is related to the project. Like if we have to, if we, if applicants should focus either on general topics or it's better to prepare a question related more on their projects, they, if they can be regional or should they better be focused on one particular country and anything that perhaps uh, has to do with general topics this year that may be prioritized or not, uh, like a brief tip, perhaps just for people to, to start their application. Sure, and I'm seeing Pam's answers, which are really good. Uh, a couple things, it is not an academic program. We don't give degrees. So if that's what you're seeking, we're not for you. Uh, you. You should go somewhere else because it's not what this program is. So it's really about journalism. And as far as framing your project, it's we want you to think of something that is of value to you and you're personally passionate about. And it should not be something you think we want, but it's something that you want. And so it, it definitely could be and should be uh, something about your experience that you've experienced. So if you're in Guatemala, it would be related to experiences in Guatemala, which there might be some broader implications of that, but that you're focusing on solving a problem that you see that you think needs to be fixed uh, in your country or your region, it's, it's either one. But you don't have to fix the whole world. <laughs> There's also another question, um, Dawn, from Esther Pinheiro. She says, what kind of challenge in journalism can we focus on? Is there any specific theme for this year? So uh, we have really opened it up. So um, we are focus, you know, whatever is going on in your country that you feel is, is a pressing, urgent need. So um, we, we have had specific focus on press freedom in the last two years. We definitely are still interested in that, but it is not the only thing that you could focus on. So um, people might have projects like Desiree and, and, and Enrique had. You could look through, one suggestion is to go through our, uh, our website. We have an alumni, uh, who, who were some of the alumni? And we also, um, uh, you can look for some of the things people have written about their projects. So that will be helpful to what things have done, people have done in the past. And also Don, now that you mentioned that there is a medium, some medium posts from the different fellows. Uh, it's very interesting to those of you who want to get to know more about the fellowship. So I strongly recommend that. Yeah, we asked the fellows each expect, I should say, we ask, but we expect 
expect fellows each quarter to write. So we have three quarters here at Stanford. It's a quarter system. So they write a piece, at least three pieces, each of them on their experience. So that's a great way to learn more about what it's like to be a fellow, what kind of projects they worked on, what kind of challenges that they decided to tackle. Perfect. And I think I will go with the last question, but I just want to make sure that you all know that there's an email address that you can also send all these questions and they are answering. So just also use them. But just to finish, about the experience at Stanford, there's a question about how does participating in a Stanford classes work? I mean, what what is really the experience that fellows get from uh, the university and the kind of, of things that they, they want to, they, they can take advantage. I'll say a few things and then if there's time for Desiree and Enrique to say a final word there about that. So uh, fellows are, um, you are not getting a degree, but you are, you have a status at Stanford so that you can sit in on classes. You gotta have the best of both. You don't have to do the tests. <laughs> And you can sit in on classes all across the university. Uh, the professor needs to let you in, but the professors are often very interested in having a fellow in their class because you have life experience. So you can take classes, but classes are really not the main and only way to experience Stanford. There are a hundred research centers at Stanford. I mentioned the Gender Research, the Clayman Institute for Gender Research as one, but there are so many centers where you could tap into uh, weekly talks that are going on every on every day on the campus something is happening so there's a talk there's a there's a seminar and some of them have free lunches as well <laughs> so you could go to all these things to get an experience and then um so it's that plus your cohort experience which Enrique talked about um, and that is really important is being able to tap into your cohort and also what are they finding on campus that you might want to know Final word, Enrique and Desiree, do you want to say something about the Stanford experience and what that's like? In my case, uh, I remember at the beginning, I was absolutely amazed about the diversity of classes you may uh, find in Stanford. You may find in Sorry, I, I, I'm listening my voice twice. Are you listening to me okay? Yeah? Okay, sorry. So uh, yeah, but uh, in my experience, I didn't fill my schedule with classes. I took like a couple each uh, quarter. I did sports, I did art classes, I did journalism classes, I did feminist classes, but I used like the main of my time, like hanging out with my friends, going to all these different events that Stanford uh, has, and also, reaching other JSK fellows at Stanford, like in the journalism uh, school, you have like very interesting people that are working there too. So this is a potential experience to build a network that does not only happen at classes. And Enrique has a very different experience than mine. <laughs> yeah, I didn't take many classes either. I think I took three each quarter three or two or three or four, uh, depending on the, on the quarter. Um, but I definitely took the time to do the readings and the readings were awesome. Um, sometimes you won't get as much from the lectures as from the readings. And you can, you can basically skip the, sometimes you can basically skip the lectures and just do the readings and then use the, uh, that time to create connections to get to know people to uh, go to the to research centers or to uh, other kind of lectures not not formal classes but as Don said uh, things that happen uh, uh, at the FSI the international the Center for the International Studies or the, uh, the uh, what was it called digital policy center or no uh, Digital Policy Center, where they, instead of teaching uh, a an, 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 an normal syllabus, uh, what you probably already know if, if you're studying journalism or if you're going to journalism classes, you can use it to uh, learn about the, uh, what the researchers are 
investigating and are researching what their findings are, the, the newest things among, amongst the new. Uh, and that's, that's very helpful as well. Yeah, yes, I, just, I just want to uh, highlight some really great conversation in the chat. So you mentioned the email. There's please do we'll, if you don't get all the questions answered today because we have so many questions. JSK Fellowships at Stanford.edu, uh, and that's on our website everywhere. You could find that we have an FAQ, and then no, you do not need a degree to be a fellow. That's we're not an academic program. Uh, um, someone asked that, and to um, yeah to follow us on social media. We are JSK everywhere. <laughs> Um, we are still on X for the moment, <laughs> Twitter. Uh, we are uh, on LinkedIn. We are on Facebook, uh, Instagram. So you can watch there for more updates if you'd like to know more about us. Thank Don's, you, Don. Don's Can having some controversy with Elon Musk. So that's why he's just planning to leave. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. Thank you, Enrique. <laughs> And Desire Enrique from Guatemala and Desire Yepes from Ecuador. And Don Garcia, she's the director of the fellowship programs at JSK. So thank you, the three of you, for letting us know more about this fellowship and also for opening our eyes as journalists from Latin America to see that there's a lot of opportunities out there for us. And maybe an opportunity is at JSK in Stanford. So that's very exciting. And something that I have in mind is no brilliant jerks. <laughs> so that's the motto. <laughs> the main, one of the main aspects, oh, there it is, from Don Garcia. Uh, I think that from the experience for both from Desire and Enrique, this is an opportunity, this fellowship is an opportunity to renew ourselves and also to think about journalism and the importance of, of it and to grow as leaders in our region. So thank you, Don, and thanks to all of you. And also thank you to Sembra Media. Sembra Media, uh, an organization that works with digital media leaders in the region. Don? I said, thank you, Sembra Media. Thank you, Indira. Thank huh? you, Paul, everybody who, uh, Namita, who set this up. Thank you so much for the conversation. And um, everybody in the room, please apply. Yes. You miss a hundred percent of the. <laughs> you miss a hundred percent of the of the um, chances that you don't take. So <laughs> don't apply. You don't get in. We can't. Uh, <laughs> please do. Thank you all. Apliquen. Muchas gracias. <laughs> gracias a todo el mundo. Y vamos Latinoamérica. Sí. Gracias. Adiós. Gracias. Bye.